Hello, I'm Jeff Ryan, and with my colleague Sharon Mosher and Chris Keen, presenting Vision and Change, What Graduate Geoscience Education Should Accomplish for MS and PhD Graduates. Most geoscience professional outcomes presume some kind of graduate training. This is some data from the Wilson 2018 Workforce Report that shows the first employment of PhD and MS students. And in the Summit on the Future of Undergraduate Geoscience Education, which you've heard about already, graduate education has come up repeatedly. There is national interest in the question of graduate education as well. The National Academy of Sciences and the Council of Graduate Schools have both written reports focused on what STEM graduate education should look like in the future and what the tools are we can use to do it. However, most geoscience graduate students don't go on to the PhD and they don't go into academic careers. Based on Wilson's 2015 report on geoscience bachelor's students' graduate plans, only 8 to 9 percent are intending to go in for the PhD, about 20 to 27 percent for the master's degree, and of them, only 16 percent of those MS students want to go on for the PhD, so we're not talking about a lot. And of those PhD students, only about half go into academia. So MS and PhD graduates are not going largely into academic directions. Most of them are pursuing geoscience and related careers in the private and public sectors. So given this, it raises a question. As traditional graduate geoscience programs are focused on academic research, are we suitably preparing students for the range of professional options they will find upon graduation? Thus, a second NSF-funded effort, Improving Geoscience Graduate Student Preparedness for the Future Workforce, was initiated. This effort has had three objectives. First, to identify the skills and competencies that PhD and MS students in Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences should be gaining. Investigating the best means for developing these in graduate CS science programs for students. And working with heads and chairs and graduate program directors to devise strategies for building these skills and competencies into their programs. The project has had two live events. One, a geoscience employers workshop back in October of 2018. 52 participants were there representing employers from across the Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences. They sought to provide feedback to the academic community on the skills and competencies they felt were needed by PhD and MS students as they entered their jobs and in their future careers. This was followed some seven months later by a summit of heads and chairs at UT Austin in May 2019. Was, there were 74 department head chairs and graduate program directors attending, representing about 64 different graduate degree programs across our discipline. They analyzed the feedback from the geoscience employers and from related studies, the National Academy, the Council of Graduate Schools, and then began to try to answer these questions of how to foster these key skills and competencies in, their, in geoscience graduates and how to integrate the training and practice in these into their programs. So a few words about the findings of the project from the, first, from the perspective of the employers. They felt that all graduate students, MS and PSC, both needed expertise and depth in their core areas. They needed to have mastered the technical skills of their discipline, and they needed to have a deep understanding of the fundamentals, techniques, and methods used in their work. And their sense was that our graduates, our geoscience graduates coming out of master's and PhD programs, generally are coming out with strong technical and academic skills. However, it was generally felt that they lacked in other key professional competencies. There were several important skills and competencies, regardless of discipline that they mentioned, and these echoed actually findings from the original undergrad summit effort. There were questions about problem solving and critical thinking, specifically from the perspective of defining problems and devising appropriate and sufficient solutions to them, and in articulating the sort of outcomes of their work for audiences other than an, another bunch of scientists. They found that graduates struggle with this aspect of defining problems and sort of framing them for other audiences. But once they got it framed, they addressed them well. They found that most graduates seem to ch challenge with the skills involved in teamwork, collaboration, and leadership, specifically in working in large, diverse teams of trained individuals toward common goals, which is becoming more and more common in all aspects of geoscience employment. They, their sense, frankly, was that our graduates just have very limited experience in these kinds of collaborations and teamwork coming out of their programs. And they also found that they lacked broad-based communication skills. It wasn't that they couldn't write. It was that they couldn't effectively convey their findings to a diverse set of audiences, both in written form and in oral form. Not just specialists, but other professionals, management, public, press. And they 
had challenges in communicating more than the technical aspects of it, the societal and financial impacts as well as the science. They seemed to struggle generally with this aspect. They didn't have that experience with diverse audiences. There are other skills and competencies they mentioned that were a challenge for graduates at times. Project management, specifically from the financial perspective, business skills, innovation and entrepreneurship as being a key part of that, ethics and professionalism from the standpoint of working as a professional in the field, career awareness. A lot of these students didn't seem to know how to network. A lot of the students they dealt with didn't seem to know how to find jobs, how to put together a good resume, how to interview. And they didn't seem to have a lot of knowledge of the career opportunities that were at their disposal. They also didn't seem to recognize that they had a virtual presence, a virtual brand, if you like, thanks to their social media activity. And they hadn't really put much thought into what that meant. And there were corporate skills that they were lacking. They were, they were challenged in terms of making what they were doing relevant to the person above them, the CEO, the manager, and that it, uh, limited them in terms of moving up in the organization. The one technical skill that was mentioned by the employers that was a real issue was the question of data management and data analytics. And what this really relates to is the growth in big data. This is something that wasn't called out in the early summit events. It's a new issue. And it really does reflect the dramatic growth in big data applications in our field. And it isn't just working with the data and the various platforms, but having the computational skills required to do it. It's more than just having higher math. It's coding and basic programming. It's being able to analyze algorithms, being conversant with cloud computing and supercomputing, all of these things that are necessary for dealing with these large data sets. Statistics is a big, important part of doing this, and this is something students aren't necessarily as conversant with as maybe they need to be. And at the same time, they still need to have a real clear comfort with traditional higher math, calculus, diff differential equations, linear algebra. So. At our next meeting with the heads and chairs, they took the advice of the employers, the recommendations of the employers, and analyzed them and really came to broad agreement with the employers about the key competencies, technical and otherwise. And a lot of the rest of the event was devoted to trying to understand where in the graduate programs of our students these kinds of competencies should be taught. And the sense of the chairs was that research was a place where the students should develop many of the technical professional skills that were talked about, particularly things related to disciplinary and technical knowledge, computational skills, big data and analysis. These kinds of things are, should be happening in their research. Written and oral communication is part of the research process, not just thesis and dissertation, but potential and presentations of various sorts, but potentially broader communication as well. There was discussions about trying to build different kinds of communication modalities into graduate programs to give students these experiences. Critical thinking and problem solving obviously happens here. There was a great, you know, a, 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 a sense of the importance of that. Also, research ethics, ethical behavior, and standards of practice was seen as something that research should be building. Teamwork was another issue that was pointed to for research, but it was also agreed that it was somewhat difficult because of the scale of the kinds of teamwork that is being done in the private sector and the public sector these days. That isn't always amenable to what happens in academic degree programs. There are big international initiatives like IODP, going out on research cruises, some big atmospheric science initiatives where you have the ability to have students work in large interdisciplinary teams with a diverse group of people. In those cases, you can get to some degree of this kind of teamwork, but it's difficult for this to be modeled. They also looked at where within the sort of formal course and curricular structure of their programs, they could do some of this kind of work and support some of these competencies and also within their advising efforts. They looked at mapping these competencies across their curricula using the matrix model that Moke and Moak has advocated since about 2013. This was very popular in the original summit effort, building these kinds of teamwork slash business related activities into some courses. The AAPG Imperial Barrel competition came up. Many of the programs are already doing elective and special topics courses on big data, coding, statistics, science communication, even project management. And some were even talking about reevaluating and sort of revisioning the comprehensive exam structure in the context of trying to meet some of these broader professional expectations. However, one of the big items that was talked about at length at the Chair's Summit related to something called individual development plans as a means for student advising. These plans are 
customized roadmaps for professional training and goals for students. The students work with advisors to create this. It involves an honest assessment of their skills, their career aspirations, the skills they desire to gain while they're in graduate school. It talks about the professional development opportunities that they can take advantage of. This is something that AAAS has been pushing reasonably hard through their My IDP effort. Here's the link here. And uh, a number of programs around the country have already begun to do this. They also talked a lot about co-curricular activities as a way to support some of these key professional skills. Some of these can happen departmentally through professional clubs, internships, organized outreach efforts. A lot of the leadership management, communication, and interpersonal skills can be developed through these kinds of activities. And they also talked about leveraging our professional societies using the GSA short courses, the AGU workshops, the NAGT education workshops at GSA and other venues at the Earth Educators Rendezvous as a way of giving students some additional professional development in different aspects of their careers, in teaching, other kinds of things. Some programs ha take advantage of their alumni organizations to do this. They have employer partners who come in and provide this kind of professional development for students. Sometimes it's returning interns, others bringing in real world kinds of case studies that students can learn from. And then there are obviously, and this was talked about at the employer workshop, industry-based research field and other training activities which students can take part in as well. So, as I mentioned, this is an ongoing project, and so just to give you some sense of what the ongoing activities are, our participating heads and chairs have produced 60 action plans aimed at reforming their graduate curricula. We are working with them. Progress reports on these plans are coming in related to their implementation, and we are continuing to work with these, these chairs. We are reaching out to additional heads and chairs of other geoscience broad, broadly drawn programs. We're going to be doing this, obviously, under the current circumstances virtually. We will have an event at the Earth Educators Rendezvous in 2021, as well as some others, which you can look for at the University of Texas website for details as they are scheduled. And as well, there is going to be a chapter in the Vision and Change report that you've already heard discussed in this session about the future of graduate geoscience education that outlines some of our key project findings. So with that, thank you for your attention and I'll answer any questions you may have.